Welcome to Precision Programming Services. In this video, we're going to work on bringing a SOLIDWORKS part file in and using our WCS and our new tool planes to set up a configuration and go ahead and throw, let's say, one toolpath on it. So we're going to go ahead and start by we have a part1.sldprt file that we're going to go ahead. I'm going to drag that in. I'm going to left click hold. It's on another screen. I'm going to bring that right in and drop that down. So we can go ahead in this case and see that that file is sitting over here in space. And we could see in our levels here, it's actually showing us two solids. We have the main part solid on level two. We show a base form. We're going to go ahead and stick with number one on our levels being this part and I'm going to right click and say isometric and we can see that here's our origin. I'm going to go ahead and temporarily create another plane to orientate this part. I'm just kind of rotating the part around in space to how I'd like to see it set up. I'm going to go here to our gnomon and I'm going to left click. And you can see our dynamic plane option comes up and our gnomon comes up. By default, as soon as I go to a face, it automatically goes flat. So in this case, looking at the top, the Z is in the direction I want. So I'll go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and take it and move it to the end point here. And I'm going to orientate the X in the direction I would like the X positive to line up with this part. I'm going to go ahead and shift and just put it at the intersection by selecting another endpoint on the geometry. I'm going to go ahead and say main plane and unchecking a few tools here and green checking. So we can see that the part actually is set in this case in the upper left hand corner. When I go to planes we can see that that is our new top. It is following that. I'll Alt 7 to put it in isometric view. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add some stock to the outside of it and reorientate it a little bit based on that the origin is in the upper left hand corner of the part but I know that I'm going to want that to be in a different location for example at the corner of our physical stock. So going over to wireframe tab I'm going to go over to bounding box and as it says I'm going to go ahead and select the model and end selection. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of extra stock. So for example, I'm going to put it in the middle here and I'm going to look at this and say I'm going to call that 8.5. On the Y, I'll call it 4 inches. And on the height, I think I'll go ahead and pull this a little bit. So I'm going to grab the top here, pull that up, say 50 thousandths on the top, and just like I might be holding it in a vise, I might go ahead and go 0.2 in the bottom, giving it a little bit of extra stock there. I would like our origin to come from this upper left hand corner of the physical stock when we define that. We could see here at the bottom under create geometry, we've set this for lines and arcs. So it's going to go ahead and create us physical geometry. One of the thoughts might have been was to go to levels and actually create level 3 and we could call this stock, making that active. I'm going to go back to the tab with the boundaries. I'm going to tell it for origin, the upper left hand corner. I like the values I have. I am now going to do is I'm going to go over to advanced. I'm going to tell it to create a tool plane and I'm going to give that op1 paths for example. I'm going to tell it to set as a current tool plane and set WCS for a new tool. You can see it's showing some volume. Checking this is good and I will say OK. You can see in this case it's now created the wireframe geometry based on our stock. We can also see that here's our, our opt1 paths just making sure that our construction plane is set for the same location. 
and if I go to levels in this case we can see that the geometry for that is set up there so we're actually ready to go after and do toolpaths based on this configuration of course I can go back at any time using the planes option back to our main here and you can see that it's coming at the intersection and the top of our part compared to our other one here you can see it is now at the top of that material there let's go ahead and do a quick toolpath on this particular side so we're going to go to machine and I will drop down and I will pick a generic Oz 3 axis machine I'm going to use a dynamic toolpath I'll go ahead and stick with the name machining region under solid configuration using that face there say OK. I'm going to use the avoidance in this case this edge here here one here and one here. Also going to select the top of this one and the top of this one here. I'm going to basically create a toolpath. It's going to come down here down to this top shelf right here and machine away some of our material for us. So we'll say OK. Let's look at a preview of our chains. We can see that it's avoiding those areas there and we'll machine in that region area that I wanted. Tool. I'm going to go ahead and select a 3 8 and adjust that to Tool 1. For myself and let's give it a holder I'd like to give it a 3 8 holder here and I'm gonna go back to tool I'm gonna right click and edit projection and I'll put it at this value I'm gonna put it at the deepest value of the physical part and I'm gonna grab the holder and pull that down a little bit here giving myself a little bit of room what do we got let's go ahead and call that 1.15 as a value and we'll go ahead to ex and enter to accept that so then we go back to the holder our value engage late is set tool parameters we'll go ahead and say 0 10 and 0 on the floor depth cuts no clearance 1 inch top of stock is 0 Let's take a look what we have. Tool pass. It's now in the middle of regenerating. Now what we didn't do was give it a Z value. Not a problem. We'll go back into parameters. Because I picked at the first geometry was the top and not defined the depth. So selecting that edge will regenerate that. Now that that's regenerated we can see it it's at the depth that we wanted going into stock setup real quickly we'll go ahead plane set good and we'll select corners with that one and that one and we'll go ahead and green check there of course if we right click on the toolpath we can see the motion of the path and we can see it removed the material this is good I'll go ahead and close that I'm going to rotate the part around to a visual of what I might want to see here so in this case setting it like that I will go ahead and right click and create a toolpath group changing the name for that toolpath up to bottom I'm going to go ahead and set up a new plane based on this top area here. So grab flat. In this case, I would like it at the intersection. And I will go ahead and reference cross geometry here. And of course, reach out to the outer edge of the part here and call that op2 
bottom. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create a view sheet and save a bookmark and set our planes for us. So we can see that we're ready to go ahead and work in that view. Okay, I went back and I've added a toolpath to the bottom area here using a 3 8 bullnose end mill to go in there and dynamically remove the material around inside this pocket. So we've also gone in and I went back and I'm going to look at my view sheets here, flipping the part back over, resetting my WCS tool plane and construction plane top one, and I've also just done a little bit of a modification pretty much the same except for that I added some depth cuts used island depths to go ahead and take off the tops and face off the tops of these islands here after it's machining down so we'll go ahead and say OK there and if I right click on the toolpath real quickly we can just kinda take you through a quick motion on that that run through that first step for a second we can see we're on the second step down it's starting to leave the island standing and you will see that it'll go ahead and remove the material around and then it's going to come back in there and actually take off the tops bring those down to height where there's still material supporting the bottom area nicely like that and then continue through to finish the bottom. I'll go ahead and push that through real quickly here and we'll be able to see that it will go all the way down to that first step that we wanted and leaving a few of the islands there. So at any time we can go back to the first operation or the second operation working with our work coordinate system. Of course going back into our planes at any given time and we could say top, let's we'll go ahead and construction plane and you'll notice that when I put this in that view, this is just the way the part came in and also the distance from our world origin. So moving back to what I want to work with or using the view sheets at the bottom. So the bottom view sheet coming from that location there and coming from the top of stock for op one. I hope that you find this useful to see a little bit about the using of the option of under wireframe bounding box, also using a dynamic planes, hosting those, and setting up and doing some tool paths in two different groups based on one side of the part and the other side of the part.